Hi everyone, welcome back to lab for crypto Today, we're going to deep dive in our flagship model, which is our risk metric. The purpose of this model is to answer the most important questions that every investor has. When is a good time to accumulate an asset? When is a good time to hold it? And when is a good time to exit your position? This video is going to be split in three sections, which on the first section, I'm going to explain how this model works, on the second section, I'm going to have examples with potential strategies that you can use to optimize your portfolio performance. And on the third section, I'm going to show you an observation that we have made on the previous cycles, which we believe that if it's going to be used on the upcoming one, it can amplify the performance of your portfolio even further. Now in front of you, you are seeing a graph which is the Bitcoin price versus its risk. Of course, in our platform, you will be able to see more than 18 assets, but I will leave that to you to explore in our platform. On the X axis now is the daytime. On the Y axis on the left side is the price measured in dollars. And on the graph is represented by the blue color. On the right side is the risk, which goes from zero to 100% and it's represented by the red color. As you might guess by now, when the risk is in the low regions of zero to 20%, that means that it was a good time for you to accumulate. And when the risk was between 80 to 100%, the risk is too high, and it's a good time for you to exit your position. But of course, there is much, much more details that we'll see in this video, and I'm going to show you some examples and now let's deep dive on the risk metric itself. Now let's see some examples with the performance of the risk algorithm in the low risk region and the high risk region. So we can understand more uh, the performance of the algorithm. And then we'll move on to the next section with uh, more detailed examples. Here we see that the risk was hovering between zero to 5% and the price was hovering between 200 and $250. And this, the algorithm was signaling that it was a good time to accumulate. And Bitcoin went all the way up to the 19.5K region of dollars, which was a really, really good time for you to exit the market based on the risk algorithm, which we see that it was hovering between 90 to 95%. And if you have done that, we see that Bitcoin dropped from the 19.5K that we saw before all the way down to the 3.5, 3.4K region. And again, the algorithm here was signaling that it's a good time for you to accumulate Bitcoin at the 3.5K uh, region. And if you done that, the Bitcoin again went all the way up to the 50 57.5K. And we see that the risk algorithm here again was signaling that it's a good time for you to exit as the risk was 99.86%. And if you, again, if you have done that and the uniqueness of the algorithm here, because it's the, maybe the only one that we are aware of that managed to get the double peak on the Bitcoin price on the last cycle. And we can see that it, it signaled that 57.5 was a good time for you to start exiting the market. And although the price was hovering between this region for two or three weeks, we see that the Bitcoin price in the summer dropped all the way, now, all the way down to 29.7K. And again, here, the risk went to 42%, which it was in some examples that I will show you on the next section, can someone considering an accumulation zone, but with different dynamics. And it went all the way up to 66K, which again, the algorithm was uh, signaling that is a good time for you to start exit your position. And before we go to the, the calculation and how this metric is measuring this risk number, I want to show you an example of the performance of the algorithm when the FTX crashed occur, because when the FTX crash happened, you 
want something at least to signal that something is off which is not dependent only on the price and I will explain. Now let's move to the FTX token which you can find it with the ticket FTT and here we have this information in our platform for educational purposes so you can explore the dynamics and the helpfulness of this algorithm. Here as expected on the low risk region the price of the FTX token was $1.2, it went all the way up to the $40 region, then all the way down to the $24, and then again on the second peak on the $73, $74. And the algorithm was signaling that's a good time for you to exit. And here is something that we saw also on the Bitcoin example before. Here, when you see the peak, it was the day that the FTX filed for bankruptcy. And as you imagine, the price of the token plummeted. The important thing here to note is that the risk was dropping alongside the price as expected on the bear market. But here, let's see the last couple of months before the crash. Here, the price was $29 and the risk was 2.5%. So that means that it's a good time to accumulate the token if you want. But we see a day after the algorithm jumped to the 72.3% risk and the price barely moved, if you see. And here's the uniqueness of the calculation of this risk metric. And I will explain. But here, the important thing to note is that three months before the crash, the algorithm was signaling that something was off on the FTT token and it was a time for you to start exit. And the uniqueness of the algorithm here that we use is that for the first time, you will have an algorithm which, com which combines the off-chain data and the on-chain data. The off-chain data is something that is used on the traditional markets, which is the price, which is the volume, is the volatility, nothing, um, nothing uh, amazing here. But the on-chain data is something new. It's something that you can only find in the blockchain ecosystem. Because on the blockchain ecosystem, the transactions and the history of the transactions is publicly available to everyone which downloads the blockchain. Here we can gouge the health of the blockchain. And we think that is something really important. And, and that's why we created this algorithm. For example, if we go to the active addresses here, every day we can see how many people are using the blockchain of Bitcoin, for example. How many new addresses, which is really important to know how many new people are entering the market. Here is the total addresses. Here is the cumulative number of all the addresses seen at least one time in the, in the Bitcoin ecosystem. And you can see it's in an uptrend which is really important. Then moving to addresses balances, you can find, okay, how many people own more than 0.01 Bitcoin? How many people own one Bitcoin and above? And you can see that this number is again in an uptrend, which is really important because you are seeing that people are continue to accumulate the asset. And by using and combining the on-chain data and the off-chain data, you can create the risk algorithm. The exact calculation of the, um, of the risk metric is not publicly available, but the data and the daily values of more than 18 assets, all our members will be able to see the values each day and gouge where the market is going and be prepared when something is going off like the FTX result. Note that the reason that we said that these data are updated daily is because that we are using the closing data of the off-chain and the on-chain data to create and calculate the risk values each day. And in addition to that, you can of course check all the historical values in our platform of all the assets that you care in the table below, but also in the graph. Now let's move to the second section, which is the examples of potential strategies that you can use to optimize your portfolio performance. This is the first example that I will show you 
but always know that nothing can be considered a financial advice from these examples. It's just me showing you some potential ways that you can optimize your portfolio performance. But always know that you have to tailor your portfolio based on your risk tolerance. Let's move to the interesting part. On the x-axis again is the date. On the right y-axis is the risk that goes from 0 to 100%. And on the left y-axis is the price of Bitcoin in logarithmic scale that goes from 0 to the maximum price that Bitcoin reached. The red line is the risk and the blue line is the price. The green color numbers illustrate the accumulation region, which ranges from 0 to 50%. And from 50% to 100% risk, the exit region. I will explain in a bit what the numbers are. I believe most people in the crypto industry are familiar with the word dollar cost average or DCA, which is a strategy in which one sets a fixed buy or sell amount in a fixed interval. An example of this strategy is to set a buy order for 50 euros or dollars of any asset each month without caring if the price of the asset goes up or down. Personally, I'm not a fan of this strategy as I prefer a more dynamic variations of DCA that I will show you using the examples that I have prepared. The risk y-axis is split into bands of 10% increments. And in each band, one can make dynamic decisions. For example, imagine that each week I check the Bitcoin risk. And when it's between 40 to 50%, I accumulate a present amount, for example, 50 euros or dollars worth of Bitcoin. When the risk drops between 30 to 40%, I scale up this amount by a factor of two. With the same idea, when the risk is between 20 to 30%, I scale up the initial amount by a factor of 3, and the accumulation amount became 150 euros, which is 3 times 50. As the risk continues to go towards zero, the accumulation amount increases linearly. And as you can see, between 0 to 20% risk, most of the accumulation occurred. That's why I call it a dynamic strategy, as the accumulation amount changes based on risk. And historically, this strategy has been great. In contrast, when the risk is between 50 to 100%, a dynamic way to exit the market is the following. Imagine you own one Bitcoin, and as the risk increases, you want to exit the market using the risk metric. Your BTC is split in fractions, and when the risk is between 50 to 60%, you offload 1 15th of your Bitcoin. Using the same linear way as before, when it moves to 60 to 70% risk, you increase that amount by a factor of 2, and so on. Again, the important piece of information is that using this dynamic way, 9 fifteenths of your BTC was offloaded when the risk was between 80 to 100%. Of course, depending on your risk tolerance, instead of using this linear method, you can use various other ways to enter and exit the market, such as an exponential way. Furthermore, you can split the bands in asymmetric ways with different split increments such as the following examples. In this slide, the bands are split in 10% increments as before, but the hold region is introduced. One can say that I will accumulate heavily when the risk is low, between 0 to 20% risk. Then I will hold my position between 20 to 80%. And when the risk is between 80 to 100% risk, I will exit my position. In the following example, the bonds are split in 5% increments. As someone can say that I want to trade more frequently. Therefore, by splitting the bonds in 5% increments, the total amount of bonds is 20 
and therefore you will take actions more frequently. Also, in this example, the accumulation and exit regions are not symmetric. Between 0 to 35% is the accumulation zone, and between 35 to 100% is the exit region. Moving to the next example, imagine that someone believes more in a project and therefore sets the dynamic accumulation zone between 0 to 65% risk, whereas the exit zones are between 65 to 100% risk. The last slide introduces a hold region between 30 to 60% risk. The accumulation region is between 0 to 30% and the exit region between 60 to 100%. As stated before, you can tailor your strategy and your capital allocation based on your risk tolerance, as there are infinite ways that you can adjust your hold exit and accumulation zones. But hopefully, I managed to convey the idea behind the dynamic portfolio optimization using the risk metric. Let's move to the next section, which I call portfolio amplification. It's an observation that we have made from the previous cycles, and it's worth checking out, as it can amplify your portfolio performance even further. Now let's see the observation that we have made on the previous cycles. The red line represents the Bitcoin risk and the purple line the Ethereum risk. Again, on the y-axis on the right side is the risk which goes from 0 to 100. And here we are observing that the red line came first and then the purple line. And the same thing happened to the bull run of 2021. Bitcoin reached a peak in February 2021 and Ethereum peaked in May 2021. So someone, how someone can use this observation? Let's see that with numbers. Bitcoin price was on the peak was 57, 55K and Ethereum price, if we click it, it was 1.9, 1.7K. So someone, instead of offloading the amount of uh, Bitcoin that wants to offload to stable coins, it can offload some to altcoins. As, although in this example we are seeing Ethereum, most of the altcoins have shown the same behavior. And therefore, you can optimize your performance by, instead of offloading your allocation, from Bitcoin to stable coins to offload, from, to offload from Bitcoin to altcoins. And for the sake of the example, if you moved your Bitcoin from Bitcoin instead of stable coins to Ethereum, and Ethereum here at the 22nd of February was 1.7K, when Ethereum peaked and the price was 4K, you have managed to double your portfolio performance. And therefore, the most important observation here is that someone can write the Bitcoin gains and then write also the altcoin gains. And someone can say, okay, that was a 2x only, but note that most of the altcoins, which are below Ethereum, they have much smaller market cap which what that means, when that happens, the gains are much more than 2x, can be 4, 5, 10, and some coins like Cartano, the previous one was 100x. So it's a good for you to gouge the, um, the performance and the risk of the coins of your interest and see how you can move your allocation between stable coins and altcoins. I hope you like the examples that uh, I have shown. Please, if you like the content, please subscribe and like the video as this will show the video to more people and more people in our industry are going to be able to take informed decisions. Until the next time, bye-bye.